this Android series is going to be about creating a, a media thumbnail viewer. So you can view the thumbnails from videos as well as images. And for part one, we're going to be setting up the external read storage permissions. Welcome to Mobile Application Tutorials. My name's Nigel. Okay, we've got the start of a new tutorial series here. It's going to be the uh, media, I'm going to call it media thumb viewer. So you can view videos as well as images from the viewer and then play them or view them. Um, it will also, you'll also be getting a, given exposure to content, content providers, um, especially the media store content provider. We're going to be using cursor loaders as well to load the cursors in the background thread. And we'll also use a recycle view to use with that cursor loader. Okay, so let's make a start. So the first part of this is we're going to need to get access to the external read storage just to be able to view the um, media and create our thumbnails. This does take a little bit of work, especially if you're using Marshmallow or Later because we've got to implement runtime permissions. So let's make a start. So we're going to create a brand new application from scratch. So select here, start a new Android project. And I'm going to call it Media Thumb Viewer. Select next. I'm just going to keep the settings as they are. I'm going to use an empty activity here. And I'll just call this the media thumb main activity. You can call it whatever you want for the main activity. And now we're going to finish, select finish. And wait for our project to be built. I am using Android Studio version 2.1 now. I did get a, it's gone away, I did get an error up the top right hand side. I did use the Vim plugin and it might be related to that, but it should be okay for the tutorial purposes. That's now been built. So the first thing we want to do for our permissions is to go into the Android manifest file and set up your user's permission for the uh, read external storage. So let's see if I can find that. Uh, Android, there it is there, and I can just set user's permission, and this is what I want here, the read external storage permission, and just complete the tag, I'll save that, okay, this works fine if you're working on op uh, Android, versions of Android OS older than Marshmallow, this will be okay, but I'm working on Marshmallow, so we need to enable runtime permissions as well. So let's go to the source file for that. So here's our main source file here. So I'm just going to create another method just to check to see if we've got read external storage enabled or not, permissions uh, approved or not. Let's create a new method. And let's call it check read external so hopefully the descriptions and the method name check external reader storage permission now we want to check to see it as I mentioned before we want to check to see if we're using older Android versions uh, older compared to marshmallow or not so we'll do a check for that We want to check to see if the SD8K version is bigger though or equal to a marshmallow, then we'll implement the runtime permission request. Uh, marshmallow at this state of the tutorial. I know that ends coming out sooner or later, but the official release hasn't yet been released. Okay, now let's just go down to there and complete the else. And in here, I'm just going to put a quick comment. I'm not going to put any code in here because we haven't yet written the code. But I'm going to put the code in here, start cursor loader. 
which will be happening on another tutorial. Okay, now inside here, if we are using Marshmallow later, we need to check for the permissions. So if we do a call on context, so we want to check to see if we've got the permissions. So we call check self permission. We can use the activity context and the manifest. We need to call manifest permission read external storage. So we're doing a check on that and we're checking to see if permission has been granted or not, such as the code explains in here. So if it has, it's fine. We can, I'll just copy that line there. So that's fine if it's, if permission's been granted, we can start the cursor loader. If it hasn't, we're going to have to do a bit of work. Um, a good idea is call should show permission rationale. This will normally be called if we've rejected the permission previously, but we need to remind the user of the application we really do need this. So we'll call select uh, should show request permission rationale. Method's sort of naming similar to mine. I said we'll call manifest.permission.read external storage. And inside here we're just going to put a toast just to explain why we need this. So inside here we just put a text um, uh, at needs to view thumbnails. Something like that, telling it why we need it to do that. And it needs permission to read that. So we'll complete the toast. Okay. So you may or may not want to put that in there, but we do need to put this in here. We need to request permissions. Okay, so we're going to re put a request through on the uh, read external storage permission. So it's put the permission in first. And it's an array of strings. We're just going to create a string array as such. And then add in our manifest permission, which is read external storage. Okay, we also need to add a request code. So we'll put that at the top. Uh, use uppercase, and it's going to be the request code. The request code is going to be for read external storage. I know it's a bit long, but it does give us good context. Permission result. And we'll give that a value of zero. And we can now pass that, I'll create a new line here. We can now pass in that read external storage result because we're going to need it on, the, on request permissions. Basically Android OS is going to want to compare that and either grant or deny us that permission. Okay, so we call that there. And that's fine for our check storage, check read external storage permission. We need to actually do the on result, on permission results call back for this as well. So it's an overridden method from the activity. So I can just press command in on my Mac and then override methods and then start typing what I think the name is on request permissions result. There it is there highlighted just down below. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is create a switch statement. Um, this is like forward proofing in case we're going to need Permission, other sort of permissions, the application is going to require other sort of permissions. So I'm going to create a switch just to support that for forward maintenance, whatever you want to call it. And in here we're going to pass in the request code. And let's um, set the super, um, the super constructor here. Let's put that into the default of the switch statement. That in. Now let's implement our um, to see whether or not our external read of storage 
permission has been granted or not. To be a case, and it's the read external storage result. Just let me put a break down here. Okay, now let's do the check. The check is on the grant results. So let's call grant results argument here. It's going to be the first argument because we're only providing it with one um, request code. And just to check that that package manner permission has been granted. If it has, we can call the cursor loader. If it hasn't, you're going to probably want to put this else statement in here and put, oh, we didn't get permission granted just to inform the user that permission hasn't been granted. Um, I've, put that, I've done that a number of times in some other tutorials as well, so I'm just going to leave it out because I do really require this permission. The application needs this permission to fundamentally work. Okay, so that part's now done. Now, well, just let me put a toast in here. This is more for debugging purposes to let us know that permission has been granted. Can let's just say can now 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 have access to view thumbs. Hopefully you realise they're not the thumbs on your finger, the image thumbs. Only half joking there. Okay, so we've got now a toast in there just to inform us for debugging purposes whether or not we've, we're at this stage and we've got now got permission to view our thumbnails. Okay, there's just one more thing we need to do, which is to call our check read storage check read external storage permission method. Type it a lot faster than I can say it. Okay, that's now done. So let's run this. See if the application asks for permission and see if we get the permission granted. That's all we're going to prove in this tutorial. We've gone over the uh, 12 minute or 10 minute clock off time, I can see on my clock. So we'll run that, see what happens. Applications now start. Let's record that so you can see what's happening. Okay. And we can see, already see the pop-up asking us for the, uh, the application to view photos, medias, and files on the device um, just to view it. So I'm going to select allow. And we, we've been granted permission. You would have seen the pop-up box there saying, yes, we've got now got access to view those images. And we've also got a little hello world pop-up at the end there as well, so I'll, we'll hopefully remove that in the next tutorial. We don't need Hello World. Okay, so that concludes part one of the Android Media Thumbnail Viewer application. Um, no new stuff for any of you who have been watching my tutorials, but it does take time to set up the permissions, and especially the runtime permissions for Android applications, so it's best to get that done first thing and out of the way to so you can move forward with the other parts of the application development. So if you want to get notified of the following episodes to this tutorial series or any of the other tutorials that I'm working on, don't forget to click on that subscribe button down below. And surrounding me is all my social media accounts. Um, I think I'm going to put them on my right hand side. So it's, uh, Surrounding means all my social media accounts, you can click on those. If you do need to contact me for any reason, if you've got questions or anything like that that aren't regarded related to the tutorial, uh, such as bugs or defects, I can be contacted on Code Mentor. Hopefully, I'll put the link within on the left hand side of me. So I can be contacted that way. I, I won't. Um, respond to questions on the videos itself because I've had so many thousands of them. So you'll need to contact me directly through Code Mentor if you do really need to get in touch with me. And just above me is a link to my website as well. So that's a good place to watch the videos, information on where to get the code from GitHub, as well as descriptions of the code changes made as well. Anyway, that's it for this one. Bye for now.